Once air pressure is built up, the vehicle is ready to go. With the new vehicles, there's no need to sit and idle for warm-up. You're wasting fuel, you're wasting time. We suggest you stay easy on the throttle until at least the coolant gauge starts to move. Achieving maximum fuel efficiency is a practice that is ongoing while the vehicle is moving. Working the engine smartly will result in better fuel efficiency and improved engine performance. On a level hard surface, the correct way to get the vehicle rolling is second ratio, engage the clutch, no throttle input, and then start working your way up in the RPM band to engage each gear. That's basically progressive shifting. Once we get up into the high side of the transmission, should be able to engage the next gear at no higher than 15 or 1600 RPM. We want to use the engine's power band to maximize the efficiency when we're accelerating the vehicle. The new turbocharger wakes up immediately as soon as you step on the throttle, even at the low RPM, right after you make your upshift. So don't be afraid to use that low RPM operation. It's a very efficient point of the fuel map. It's going to make you a better, more efficient driver. You know, wide open throttle excels, they waste fuel. But pulling a grade at wide open throttle, now that makes sense. Once up and running, torque is something that certainly helps when pulling grades. The new engine really works well through the belly of the fuel map, 1100 to 1500 RPM, which can minimize fuel consumption with exceptionally good pulling power. Approaching a grade, we want to work the engine down through the sweet spot. That means pulling the engine down to peak torque somewhere between 11 and 1200 RPM before downshifting. We want to utilize that low RPM for maximum fuel efficiency while driving up a grade. The electronics are going to monitor the turbo boost and the fueling for the engine. You can't hurt it by pulling it down that low. You're just going to be a fuel efficient driver utilizing that low RPM peak torque power band. Pulling the grade, your shifting techniques, fast or slow, and of course the steepness of the grade all come into play. If you find that the engine wants to pull the grade close to peak torque speeds, 1200 and 1300 RPM, just put your foot in it and keep pulling it. The electronics are going to monitor the boost in the fuel, not going to be able to lug the engine, not going to hurt it. And if you can see the top of the grade, if the engine wants to crest the grade, pulling below peak torque, even if it slows the vehicle down, fuel efficient move. Now that grade ascended, you've got to go back down the grade, descend it. So why do you want to fly over the top of that grade if you're going to have to use your service brakes going back down? That's a waste of energy and fuel. Why not let the grade accelerate the vehicle? Be smart when driving the vehicle. Let nature do the work for you. Anticipating speed reductions and traffic stops will also save fuel. For example, if the traffic light has just changed to red, leave the transmission in gear and avoid downshifting. Pay attention and play the traffic. Along with monitoring traffic ahead of you, behind you, in your mirrors, you need to be looking at the gauges every once in a while. Understand what the engine is telling you. Of course, if you have a check engine light, that's going to record that situation for maintenance. Just let them know when you get back at the shop. Excessive steering wheel play or the vehicle pulling all the time means the front end should be looked at. But again, that's rolling resistance. That's going to affect your fuel economy. Your fan on time should not be excessive for the temperatures and the grades you're pulling. You don't want to utilize too much power excessively if you don't need it. Any trails of smoke coming out the exhaust stack could indicate a need for service. You want to monitor that. Your air dryer burps. If you don't have any air leaks, you shouldn't hear the air dryer governor go off any more than once every 15 minutes. If you see your air gauges moving and the dryer cycling once every five minutes, might as well write it up. Again, excessive parasitics on the engine 
utilizing more fuel than necessary. Finally, smart trip planning can go a long way in fuel conservation. Steady momentum is a good thing. When stopping, even for a scale check, it costs fuel. Every stop and acceleration with 70,000 pounds consumes at least a quarter gallon of fuel. Try to make one stop for relief, fueling, and meals as much as possible. And if you're stopped for more than five minutes, shut off the engine. Generally, by the time it takes you to find a parking spot, unless extremely hot, the engine has cooled sufficiently to shut it off. Driving for maximum fuel efficiency takes practice, but drivers who master the techniques are easier on the vehicles and on themselves. Less fatigue and stress makes for a safer and rested driver at the end of the day or night. Good luck and have a safe and fuel efficient trip.